Hi there, welcome to the second episode of my 10 Minute Moan today. The topic of this 10 Minute Moan is the calls for John Swinney, the First Minister and the leader of the SNP, to stand down because one of his people spoke to some Israelis, right? Now, this is cracking. For the, the, see, before I get into the story, right? What you've got to remember is this is an SNP that have currently got an ex leader, an ex CEO, and an ex treasurer under investigation. One of them already charged with embezzlement, right? This is the SNP that supported um, a then health minister for ripping off the Scottish purse by £11,000 with an inaccurate claim for phone expenses while he was on holiday. This is the SNP that don't know what a woman is. This is the SNP that try to make it legal for kids just to say, I'll be a woman when they were men and boys, right? This is the SNP. And it actually has taken a discussion between one of their cabinet and a foreign country. Now, we've had loads of them, right? Like Turkey and even Hamas leaders have spoke to, you know, people in the Scottish government and have never bothered. None of that's rent. No, I'm standing down, right? I noticed just before this newspaper article came out on Twitter, X, formerly known as Twitter, that there was a load of people going, that's it, I've had enough for the SNP, right? And you're thinking, why now? Do you know what I mean? It, if this is what's the final straw for you, your bar was a wee bit low to start with, right? Because the amount of stuff that the SNP have done over the last 10 years, and you've never been caught out line in the COVID inquiry. That's pretty, like, dangerous, right? There are members of their cabinet currently been investigated for corporate manslaughter, right? But you were still a party member. But because they've spoke to Israel, well, that's that finished. Where are the morals of these people? They, 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 they try to um, project that they are so morally superb and everything they do, but you've completely forgot about some completely immoral things your party's done and has done in the last over the last course of the last ten years to get to this point. But it just shows how caught up you are in a situation that's actually got nothing to do with you when you think about it. No, I don't think you should have been meeting Israel. The simple fact: foreign policy's got nothing to do with Scottish Parliament or SNP. It's a Westminster thing. But the reaction is absolutely comical. So the headline in the Scottish Daily Express on this is SNP supporters call on John Swinney to quit over Angus Robertson's meeting with an Israeli diplomat. The Culture Secretary held a meeting with Daniel Grudsky to discuss commonalities between Israel and Scotland, but it's an enraged anti-Israeli Nats. Key bit there of that phrase is anti-Israeli Nats. Why? Are there, is it, why is it even such a thing, right? If you're a driver, you get up every morning going, I want Scotland to be independent, right? That's your focus in life. Why are you getting so hurt up about other people? It is mental. So let's read the story, because it is quite funny. Supporters of Scottish independence have turned on John Swinney after he defended Angus Robertson's meeting with Israeli diplomat. We told on Tuesday that the, the Culture Secretary had held a secret meeting. Shouldn't he be holding secret meetings with other countries, mate? You've, the Scottish Government's already been warned about having the secret meetings with foreign governments, right? Anyway, the Culture Secretary had a secret meeting with Daniel, Daniela sorry, Grudsky, Israel's Deputy Ambassador to the UK. And the talks were kept off official Scottish Government records for four days before officials confirmed the pair discussed Areas of mutual interest, including culture, renewable energy, and engaging the country's respective diasporas. I always say that word wrong. It comes despite the SNP's firm anti-Israel stance since the war in Gaza kicked off with Hamas attacks on October 7th. The SNP leader was forced into offering a desperate explanation to the SNP voters, claiming the meeting had been about pushing the case of a ceasefire on Gaza. Again, that's not the Scottish government's job, right? 
that is, you should, it's, it's just something that you shouldn't be discussing with any, you know. I think you should stop firing bullets on that mob that invaded you on the 7th of October. It's get he hot to do it. Now, you might have an opinion on it, but you should not be interfering with it. And I actually think this is just a lie. I think this is trying to cover up to pacify some crackpot separatists in Scotland, right? Going, ah, we were, we were asking them to have a, a, a ceasefire. No, you weren't there, right? <clears throat> so I think that's just all um, nonsense. <coughs> Excuse me. But it has failed to quell the Nats who have been left disgusted at the party's apparent hypocrisy. Many have taken to writing to sympathetic newspapers to air their views with one saying SNP politicians keep shooting themselves in the foot. I agree with that. Writing in the National, David Gill. That, is that that young guy that's on Twitter? That's out campaigning like every single day and then has a meltdown and go, I'm, I'm not coming back in social media. And he's back two years later. I'm sure that's David Gill. Anyway, he said, Scotland's representatives within the independence movement should and must refrain from promoting Israel as normal democratic state. Okay. He claimed the country practices apartheid, something Israel stoutly denies, adding it kills thousands of innocents in the name of killing a few Hamas fighters and has, to our disgrace, used armaments supplied by the UK. He added the Hamas attacks were not a justification for the Israeli response. All right. So being attacked and 1,500 people that your country killed is no justification to respond. All right. He described the meeting as morally repugnant. Another letter in the Herald said, Mr. Swinney had shown a total lack of judgment and integrity in justifying Mr. Robertson's friendly meeting with a senior Israeli diplomat. <laughs> Isabel Lindsay said, Angus Robertson is damaging his own party and Scotland's reputation. John Swinney's support for him shows either a lack of a backbone or a lack of moral judgment. Either way, is this what we want as First Minister? Question started. And the First Minister's attempt to quell the storm on social media backfired with one cyber map saying, utterly pathetic, John, offensive and an own goal in the last minute of a cup final. Pure, excuse the language, Fuck with me. And another said, if you really wanted to convey your consistent position on the killing and suffering of innocent civilians in the region, you would have declined and hung the phone up. Not waited until a huge backlash prior to releasing a piss poor statement reeks of damage limitation. Resign! <laughs> Ms. Grudsky had taken to X to thank Mr. Robertson for the meeting and posting a picture enraging Nats, including politicians. Emma Riddick said her heart just sank when she saw the picture. Poor Emma. Miss Grudsky said, Thank you, Angus Robertson, for welcoming us to your wonderful Scotland. Discuss the unique commonalities between Israel and Scotland and also emphasise the urgent need to bring back our 115 hostages. Looking forward to cooperating in the fields of technology, culture and renewable energy. Mr Swinney said later the Scottish Government received the meeting request and accepted on the basis it would provide an opportunity to convey our consistent position on the killing and suffering of innocent civilians in the region. I understand why some believe a face-to-face -face meeting is not appropriate. However, I thought it necessary to outline our long-standing position on an immediate ceasefire directly and explicitly to one of Israel's representatives to UK. Now, here's how I can call BS on that, John. Right, you're the, you're the governor. You're the first minister. You're the leader of the SNP and the first minister of Scotland. So if you the meeting was to give the Scottish government an opportunity to tell Israel, you're bad, we want a ceasefire, why did you send Angus Robertson? If it was so important to you, why did you not take the meeting? Because that's not what the meeting's about, right? Let's be honest. Probably was discussed, but as we can see by your confirmation and indeed the Israeli diplomats' confirmation, spoke about loads of things, right? So, stop being daft. <laughs>
right? I'm delighted you're doing this because it's set the Cybernats and all these William Wallace wannabes off in one, right? They're, they're really, they're, they're off their nut now, right? You, you, have, you have to stand down because there's a photograph on the internet of one of your parliamentarians standing next to an Israeli diplomat, right? It's the end of the world to these people. That is more important to them than despite your lies, rising poverty in Scottish children. That's more important to these people than your three management and your party. One of them already charged and two still under investigation for embezzlement. And none of them are talking about you resigning and, you know. How many asked you to resign when you stood by and backed an MSP who happened to be the health minister at the time? He practically embezzled £11,000 of the public purse in Scotland. And you went, can he sack him? He's a good guy. You stood by that. So these people have suddenly found a bag of morals somewhere and are calling for you to resign. Did they call for you to resign when that happened? No. Because their bag of morals are all mixed up like many of your cult. And I can't wait to get, if you still get there, your, your, party, your accounts are due, um, let me see, 10 days time, you should see your accounts, right? That's going to be good. That's going to be a cracking read. And then we need to factor in how much will that be affected by the knock-on of you losing so many seats in Westminster and losing your short money, etc. Right? So, you keep going, right? And I'd, I genuinely hope you get to Hollywood elections as a party. You know, you're no bankrupt by then. Although it would not be the end of my world, right? I, I would quite like it. But I want you to actually survive until then so you can see the Scottish public do the same as what they've done to you in Westminster. And then, as I've said previously, I'm standing for election then and it will be a tough gig for me, new face at this, to get elected, right? But I'll work hard to try and get there so I can then work hard for the good Scottish people, regardless if they voted for them or not. I'll just look, do my best for them all, right? And I would love for a, a room full of you guys so I can be right beside you, watching everything you do and call you out for every single thing you say that's stupid. But if I am to be successful, I don't think there'll be a lot of you there. And a wee bit of that makes me sad. But in the meantime, I'll watch you from afar. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please hit subscribe and the notifications bell. But most importantly of all, bless you. <laughs> These crackpots in the SNP that are, oh, we're resigning now because we spoke to Israel, right? See, see unless you're them. See all the other people, the normal people. Everyone else, have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.